Okay. Before we move on to the Greek playwrights. Okay. Before we move on to the Greek playwrights that we will be covering, I just wanted to point out the bottom of page 35. The four qualities that characterize Greek theater. Greek theater was always closely associated with Greek religion. The theater festival of Dionysus was a festival to the god Dionysus. Most of the plays involve some form of reference to the gods, and they were only performed on special occasions. It is thought some of the plays that won the festival of Dionysus were only performed that one time. Odd, they are only performed at the festival in Athens and then never performed again in ancient Greece. We don't know that for a fact, but we're fairly certain of it. One way or the other, they were only performed on very special occasions, very special holidays. Greek theater was also always competitive. There was never just theater for the masses without a competition. Theater was for the masses, but it wasn't necessarily as a form of entertainment. It was a competition the masses watched. Greek theater was always choral. There were always sections of it that had a group or a chorus chanting the same lines or saying the same lines at the same time. Remember, it was Thespis who stepped out of this chorus to become the first actor. Now we're going to go into the authors. The golden age of Greek theater is generally accepted to be from approximately 475 B.C. to 404 B.C. It is during this time that Aeschylus, Sophocles, and Euripides are big playwrights. They won the competition more often than anyone else. We know this because there's a monument that was found that lists all the winners of the Athens Dionysus Festival. These three were also all innovators in a way. If you look on page 36 at the lower timeline, you can see that they, that their lives overlapped. Aeschylus being the oldest and the first to die, with the other two dying almost at the same time. Also overlapping in there is Aristophanes. Aristophanes is not considered one of the tragic authors. He's considered one of the comic authors. Anyway, Aeschylus. We know that he first entered the competition in 499 BC, and he won it at least 14 times. Each of the tragedies, and I'm now on page 48 in your textbook, each of the tragedies that we know of, the extant tragedies, won first prize. The big thing that he added to the competition, or theater in general, is that he added a second actor. When you have a second actor, you now have dialogue. So up to his innovation, theater was just people talking to the audience. Now you add actors talking to each other. We know, because we have records of them, that he wrote 81 plays, but only seven of them have survived. We hope that there are seven good ones, but we don't know that for a fact. Of course, they did win the competition, so that doesn't necessarily mean that the seven we have were his best work. Sophocles. Sophocles started entering the competition in 468 BC. He won at least 24 times, and he he became the major competition to Aeschylus, for a short time anyway. Sophocles was a major innovator. He added the third actor. Now with the third actor, the interesting thing is that you can have intrigue. You can have two actors plotting against a third actor. Or you can have... Actor A telling Actor B that they're going to gang up on Actor C, while Actor A is actually together with Actor C, ganging up on Actor B. 
it adds a whole new level to what theater could do. Sophocles also stabilized the chorus to between 12 and 15 people. Before that, the chorus was considerably larger. My guess is he wanted to stabilize it at a smaller number so that there was a greater chance that they would be talented individuals, but I really don't know that for a fact. According to Aristotle, who wrote a book called Poetics, which is really the first book on art and literature, he credits Sophocles as the first one to add painted scenery. We know Sophocles wrote 123 plays, but we only have seven of them. Sophocles wrote Antigone, which we will be reading and watching. Sophocles, it is interesting to note, lived to be just shy of 90 years old. We tend to think of people in olden days not living very long, but Greek society at this point in time was very comfortable. They were eating very good food, they were living very good lives. Sanitation was decent. They lead good, comfortable lives, much like we do today. Euripides is the third of the great tra tragic writers. Euripides is the third of the great tragic writers. He first entered the competition in 455 BC, which is just after Aeschylus died. He only won five first place prizes, and one of them just after he died. He won it posthumously. But he really changed the subject matter that was put on stage. He questioned whether the gods were good or bad, or just using humans as playthings. He frequently lampooned or parodied other playwrights. He wrote 92 plays, with 18 having survived. He didn't change the number of actors. It stayed three for a very long time. Now, these three might play a bunch of different characters in a play, but you would only have three characters and the chorus on stage at any one time. When the Dionysian Festival first started, playwrights only needed to enter with a tragedy. But soon after it started, they needed to enter with both tragedy and comedy. Later, they needed to enter with both of those, plus a satyr play. A satyr play was a very bawdy, outrageous, foul, wild comedy, the sort of thing that you might have looked like a Saturday Night Live sketch. They used this form to make fun of society, the other playwrights, the leaders, the military, etc. It's interesting to note that during the golden age of Greek theater, the playwrights used their art to criticize the government and the upper-class citizens. It was allowed and expected. In 404 BC, there was the conclusion of a long-standing war between Athens and Sparta, with Athens losing. If you look on at the map on page 34, you can see that Sparta is one of the cities on what is called the Peloponnese Peninsula, with Athens a little north and east of that. When Sparta won the war, life in Athens changed, because Sparta was an absolutely non-frivolous society. They didn't have the kind of relaxed freedoms and good life the Athenians were used to. So when the Spartans won the war, theater changed. It became an era when comedy was much more important than tragedy. It was a period where making fun of the government wasn't done casually. This happens again in a couple hundred years in Rome. Typically, when a government is less democratic, making fun of the government or people in government is not allowed. So art is forced to go away from criticizing the government. 